As Nigeria approaches its next general elections, what are the chances of a third force taking the reins of power? Presidential candidate of the AAC, Omoyole Shore, joins us on the breakfast this morning to discuss this. Well, also on the breakfast, Nigeria's federal government has urged ECHOs to support national security sector reform processes within the region. What does this mean? We have a discussion on this ahead. Plus, we also have in-depth analysis of some of today's new super headlines. We call it out the press right here on The Breakfast. We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a very interesting day. It's a rainy morning, morning, Wednesday morning, right here uh, on Victoria and Lingus. But we are here to ensure that we keep you warm uh, with uh, all the interesting, juicy conversations. Of course, we have our coffee here. And I think we're set to, uh, to go on with the program. You're welcome. My name is Kofi Bartel. My name is Messi Ebupo. And it's good to have you join us. As always, we start off the top trending conversation with uh, some of the conversations or discussions if you like to say that's uh, having several engagement and one of them is that the federal government is set to ban one more <laughs> i really cannot help but laugh uh, that's yeah. to grow the economy <laughs> so uh <laughs> so i mean from the very first time i saw that particular story or the headline uh, i have not ceased to laugh because i, I understand what Bomo means to nigerians it's very critical especially not just in nigerians <laughs> but those in southwest <laughs> those in southwest our, our brothers and sisters who are from the yoruba speaking part of the country you know like most most can do without Bomo. But, know, but it, it's a delicacy and i've grown to like it because my in-laws are from the southwestern part of the country, and having been in Lagos, I've, I've always, you know, had really. Some meals have, from how there, yeah. how many minutes? How how many months is that? Yeah, no, like I, I've gotten to understand it's a thing, and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, you know. But mercy over to you. Well, so the federal government says it's proposing a legislation to ban the consumption of animal skin, locally known as Kwamo, in the country, uh, just to revive the industry. We're talking about the sector that. Uh, makes uh, leather, you know, uh, leather bags, sandal, what have you. The list is almost endless. And so, uh, Yakubu, who is the Director General of the Nigerian Institute of Leather and Science Technology in Zaria, said that the litigation was necessary to revive the comatose leather industry in the country. He said the habit of eating animal skin, which has no nutritional value, and I agree with him, should be stopped to save the uh, industry <laughs> and boost the nation's economy. The Director General added that the Institute, in collaboration with stakeholders in the industry, would approach the National Assembly and state's government to bring out legislation banning for more consumption. And to the best of uh, his knowledge, he said Nigerians are the only people in the world that uh, actually overvalue, the word is not even value, but overvalue skin as food. After all, Bomo has no nutritional value. And trust me, it doesn't have anything. It's, you know, it's like you're just eating whatever it is. Uh, the consumption of animal skin is partly responsible for the present comatose state of uh, the uh, skin industry in Nigeria. And also, he said the, the current national leather policy had addressed some fundamental problems of the sector. However, it's been said, I mean, the reason for all of this is that because we're eating too much or more, in Nigeria. That's why, you know, the leather industry is not functional. But it's quite worrisome. So yesterday, I saw a lot of comments. Some people say, stop it. Government, stop it. Because you go, people will say they want to eat Pomo. I'd be like, Pomo has nothing to offer you, really. What is it? You know, Mercy, I don't know if you've had a breakfast this morning. Apart I from the little, the little cup of coffee in front of us uh, uh, right here. I will take the but, coffee, but, but you see, very you see, These pictures that our, our producers are beaming on the screen right now are not doing any, any anything to help help me <laughs> and my appetite this morning. And, uh, you know, I just don't know. I'm salivating as I'm looking at what's on the screen. But, um, I mean... It, how many times have we had, maybe in, the, in school, yeah, probably growing up, you know, uh, in secondary school or even university, that Pomo has no nutritional value? I'm sure in secondary school you may have heard it in home economics class or some other class. I'm not sure that it was uh, there. Pomo or, or what we call cowhide uh, has no, no, no nutritional value. 
um, do people care? I mean, I've been having a ball on social media looking at the comments. Of course, trust our youngsters to jump on this and make a joke of it. Someone took a selfie, you know, and put it on Twitter and said, me, he was looking sad, you know, and said, me, uh, explaining why I ate more <laughs> after it was banned. <laughs> you know, another person said, you know what, I'm going to go to the restaurant and just buy only pomo and eat. And they just took the picture, very long pomo, you know, put it on social media and uh, they had a long laugh. Um, Someone saying um, no nutritional value. Now Buhari they chop them by waiting for the sun and You know, they're saying leave our pomo for us. Uh, you know, um, I'm sure that some people, if you're not careful, will start the hashtag justice for pomo very soon. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> you know, but I, I, I'm sure we can understand the, the the angle the federal government is coming from. Uh, you look at the fact that you know Nigeria over the past. Uh, um, you know, pre-independence and um, early post-independence era had a thriving leather industry. I mean, we can talk about the tanneries coming from the northern part of the country. There's a country that 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 has even we're fighting. You know, we have communal clashes, intercommunal clashes, uh, uh, intertribal ethnic clashes in the country. Uh, uh, thousands of people are being dispersed because of head of farmer clashes. You know, hundreds of lives have been lost because of of head of farmer clashes and uh, cattle rustling attacks by. Uh, um, some ele some elements in the Fulani tribe, you know, we have cows everywhere. So it, it's a surprise, you know, to people who watch and who are concerned about these things, that Nigeria's economy is not, uh, uh, we're not really making much from, from leather. You know, the, the leather on your feet, I'm sure, Messi, if you were to be asked or to check, you would uh, maybe find out that it was imported from somewhere. If it's, uh, you know, Italian leather, now we have a lot of Chinese products coming to the country. What about Nigerian leather? This was something we had, just like the textile industries that have gone, you know, south. Uh, the, 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 the leather industry in Nigeria has also gone south. So what the government is trying to do is to, to revive, according to what they say, revive the industry, the leather industry in the country. Um, apart from that... We can also look at the, um, the fact that there's no nutritional value. And some people have said it's even dangerous to your health. I saw some conversation where people were talking about uh, Nigerians avoiding smoked, you know, products like uh, 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 suya, you know, and uh, pomo. You know, some people can't do without their suya. But hey, suya is not just a smoked product. It's, it's a barbecue, you know, and people eat barbecue stuff all over the world, you know. So I do not know if that is factual. But you look at the hygiene, the hygiene, uh, under which or conditions and of hygiene under which uh, the, uh, the this uh, pomo is, um, is is manufactured and made. May said did an investigative piece some years ago to try and see where some butchers in the part of Port Harcourt called Rumosi were were um, uh, were roasting the the skin of the, the the goats and the cows they got. You know, if you go to many a slaughter, we call abattoirs in, in this part of the world slaughter slaughterhouses. He realized they use they use some very unhygienic or unhealthy methods to roast this thing, uh, this uh, animal skin. You know, uh, I, I saw some of the um, this the the abattoir operators, those who the butchers are going to call it that. They were using uh, uh, tire, used tires. Yes, what what, what old, could old, old tires? <clears throat> now imagine, would you would you like to would you like to um, so, eat, so eat, 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 eat pomo that was smoked or roasted with uh, used tire? No, no. Okay, so let's come back to the conversation. We understand that there's a need because in this entire conversation, the government is saying that uh, we need to revive the tanneries, uh, the leather industry in Nigeria. Now, that's important. That's very, very important, especially when we're grappling with the issue of revenue and what we're generating, you know, to solve our problems. So we're eating a, a, a future. No, that's, we're not eating any future here, uh, Kofi. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I actually had to dig out and looking at some of the report from 2014, you find out that stakeholders have always complained and some of the issues they complained about is the fact that they were waiting for policies that would enable the industry thrive. Not just that particular industry, but the manufacturing industry. And some of the concerns that this, uh, you know, stakeholders raised were issues of, you know, power. They talked about constant power supply. Uh, they also mentioned the issue of having, um, a, amongst all the power supply, they talked about, let's even get to a point where we have, because the issue of having the raw material, major raw material is not a problem. In the north or northern part of the country, you have, uh, you know, production. 
But that's not the case. Do we have investors? They said it was a problem with local and foreign investors. And so it was important that there might just be policies to encourage local and foreign investors. They also talked about chemicals. It wasn't even it because at the time, the northern part of the country, I think that, you know, according to that report from 2013, uh, this sector has actually thrived without government effort. I mean, it's one industry that hasn't gone moribund. Uh, despite all of the challenges it's faced with, because they are thriving. And so they were saying that if government would be very lenient with her policy that would, you know, favor uh, this particular sector and the manufacturing sector, it would be a plus. So the argument has been about power, ensuring that the infrastructures, friendly environment, ensuring that you have foreign and local investors investing in the sector. So I understand that we need to revive the sector, but the concern about banning permanently for consumption. Nigerians really love this. Well, well, well I mean, uh, poly, policy or no policy? I think, I think Yakubu, uh, Mohamed Yakubu is the DG of the Nigerian Institute of Leather and Science Technology in Zaria. Uh, he, he is saying that the consumption of animal skin is partly responsible you know, for the present comatose state, I'm quoting him now, of tanneries in Nigeria. You understand? So Nigeria has a policy. We have that what they call national leather policy. Of course. Um, and... He, he is say, he's saying that the national leather policy has gone away to addressing some of the, the problems in the sector. Uh, however, uh, some fundamental problems still exist, one of which is this eating. Uh, <laughs> eating oh, well, eating I, I don't think so, that... I, I, well, I, I think from what he's saying, um, if we do not get people to stop you know, eating this product, it will be hard to find it you know, in, in the country. Um, that's what he said. He's saying if we get our tanneries to work, uh, our footwear and leather production working well. People will hardly get Pomo to buy and to eat. He also says when implemented fully, you turn around most of the comatose tanneries uh, uh, and bring out greater production. So, so if, if it works, the national leather policy, that's fine. Government will not go uh, around, you know, stopping people uh, from, from, from buying Pomo or eating Pomo. I do not know how feasible it will be uh, to go to the markets and chase the Pomo sellers away. You understand, but no, no, it but, is but, that you yes. know, um, what, what we will say that it, there should be yeah. a ban that people should not consume it yes, because yes. so we can actually pay attention. But he also, he also said, um, and I think you know, that, that also you know, dovetails into what he said that if the national leather policy works properly, that you would have less or more on the market for people to buy. So I think it's a case of uh, the chicken and the egg who came first. Um, will the ban of, of Pomo? In the Nigerian markets, will it, uh, you know, improve the, the lot of the tanneries in the country, or will the implement the proper implementation and you know uh, uh, implementation of this national leather policy will it cause there to be a scarcity of pomo? You know, that's that's, I mean, that's what it, I. I'm in other ways, coffee. We're, we're supposed but, to move on now. We yeah, will but, definitely yeah. move on, but um, it, it, it feels like you know the thoughts of the federal government because you have a representative speaking on behalf of the government. Mm -hmm. Is that because people are consuming pomo? That's why we don't have the issue has not been with you know the major. The issue has never been with the major uh, resource. It has never been with the resource. Because even without government policies favoring this particular sector, they have been on top of their game. That's number one. And apart from the fact that you also have importation from neighboring countries, uh, within the Sahara, re uh, the Sahel region, you will talk about West Africa now. It, it hasn't been it. And there's also another importation of almost ready-made uh, leather skin. So when the you say leather skin, you, you have you have you have to be to be clear. Which one is it? The one we, we no 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 no. It, it, it's <laughs> your it's ready yeah, for yeah, yeah, another level. So you want no, to say right. the blue uh, leather skin. So it's gotten through the entire processes at this point. It's not ready for it, and it's been imported from Senegal. But the point here is, I don't really think that that's the issue. The issue the stakeholders have mentioned from you don't you don't think the the eating of pomo is the issue? yeah the okay. eating of pomo is not the issue the eating of I mean pomo I mean the industry already has always complained about several issues that you don't have investors local and foreign investors you know the environment is not very friendly for people to invest if you're going to invest your money as a business person who's business conscious you hope to get profits there should be returns on it the, the, the environment has not been that's very why friendly. I, I said will will will. Is it that the proper implementation, if we want to call it that, uh, investment in the leather sector, leather industries in Nigeria, will lead to a scarcity of Pomo on the market? Or will the ban 
on eating pomo. There Pro shouldn't be no ban. Provide more, more raw material for, for the people. That is what I don't know, and it's a question. But the man seems to be saying that uh, both things, that pomo consumption is partly responsible for uh, the downfall of this sector, the poor fortunes of this sector. But he's saying if the policies are implemented properly and the ideas and suggestions they all have, uh, that probably there'll be scarcity of more. It's, it's no, no. So, so <laughs> I mean, I mean, seen. it's okay for him to make mm. all of that excuse. But I'm also saying that the people in this industry have complained about issues. These are challenges that the sector is faced with. Power is an issue. Having investors, a favorable of an environment to thrive. You know, you talk also about um, having these investors at the end of the day. I mean, having infrastructure for all of this. It's, it's just a problem that might not just be limited to this sector, but it cuts so across same. manufacturing at the end of the so, day. So banning Pomo on its own will not solve the problem. It wouldn't solve the problem. Mm. It, it, it wouldn't really so solve just the have, problem. Just have, um, eat Pomo in peace. Um, 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 you know, hide, wasting away. <laughs> Interesting, but but I think I think for me, oh, the we need to also have a conversation on the the health, you know, implications of eating pomo. That's something for another day. I but choose let, let, fish let's, over pomo any other time. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Interesting. But let's move on. I mean, if you if you give him my my correct, you know, afang soup or, or or draw soup, you know, you have to put and see something inside. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Um, the NDLA, you know, where they they've uh, recorded another success under the leadership of. Um, uh, General Buba Mara retired. He's a former uh, military administrator of Lagos State. These are the military officers that were in charge of the states in the country when Nigeria was a military um, uh, dictatorship. Uh, of course, he didn't do badly as uh, administrator of Lagos State uh, with one of the uh, modes of transportation in the state introduced under his administration. Now, being named after him, the Keke. Uh, in Lagos, they call it Keke na Marwa. Mm -hmm. In other parts of the country, they call it Keke na Pep, because, uh, or Keke na Pepe. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, his name is edged on the sands of time as far as development in Lagos State is concerned. I mean, people in Lagos State credit him with the decrease in, in crime, crime rate in Lagos State. Uh, you know, criminals will always run away when they hear that Marwa's people are coming. Well, he's taking his... Um, his adeptness at, 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 in administration and his successes over to the NDLEA, uh, making a, a previously you know, sort of comatose federal agency one of the top performing agencies in terms of results in the country. I mean, we've heard of several arrests and uh, you know cases that are on right now. I think the biggest one should be um, the one concerning the former uh, um, super cop, Abakari. But the latest, of course, we had, you know, um, it ended up busting a cocaine warehouse, seizing about 193 billion naira. That's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, 193 billion naira worth of uh, crack cocaine in Lagos. Four drug barons, drug barons were arrested in addition to one other person. This is the biggest ever heist, or let me say, uh, um, um, seizure in the history of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This is the biggest ever you can see. What do you see in front of you? Me, I think it's part of what we, we can see, if not all. Uh, be 193 billion naira. It's a lot of money. You can now understand with such uh, uh, quantities. Not, this is not a, a full warehouse, all right? Um, yielding such an amount of money, no wonder uh, people are interested in getting into this business. I mean, if you want to make profit or uh, sell, make sales of 193 billion naira, you expect to see a warehouse full of, of goods. This is really small, but uh, it's a lot. Well, uh, the agency put out a statement. This amounts in, uh, in their uh, calculation to um more than 278 million dollars you know more than 278 million dollars uh the drug barons they say they arrested or apprehended include a jamaican and the warehouse manager uh was also arrested as well they call it a well-coordinated intelligence led operation that lasted two days across different locations in lagos state so who are the consumers of these uh, this crack cocaine you might ask um now, they, they gave the names of those uh, kingpins in their custody. I'm sure you can look at the uh, statement to learn some more. But this is what we have. However, the latest, this is from yesterday. Uh, Femi Adeshinov, spokesman for the mediator president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, put out a, uh, a statement yesterday uh, informing you know, Nigerians that the president, Mahmoud Buhari, had uh, given uh, uh, Buba Marwa a phone call on the sidelines of um, his activities at the United Nations General Assembly, but we've seen pictures of the president in a very busy New York. Uh, he, <laughs> he took the time to call Marwa, and he told Marwa that he was very happy when he uh, heard of this news. 
very, very happy. Yes, yes. Impressed. But but I mean, we need to move on because we're out of time. But uh, like the president has stated, that it's quite impressive that you have all of this. But you know, it becomes very dicey when there's always an indictment on other elites and those who are, you know, in charge of government or calling their affairs. Uh, the several mentioned that you have political elite involved in the drug business, and so uh, this is just one out of it. We we think that Nigerians should be able to move in full force, and uh, the fight against you know this uh, drug barons or whatever it is you want to call it should be in full squad. I mean, we're talking about, let's be honest with all of this. If there's been some sort of indictment or people have been accused, then let's, let's have the relevant agencies get into action. Investigation should continue. But however, it's quite commendable, you know, the activities of the uh, drug enforcement agency. I mean, we're talking about the NTLE at this point in time. That's the so much that we can take because we're out of time. We'll take a break then and when we return, it'll be time for us to look through the national dailies this morning. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us.